the Zodiac's Wasteland. Today we'll be talking about the Zodiac Killer and the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. The Wasteland was written in 1922 and it has five parts, the Burial of the Dead, A Game of Chess, The Fire Sermon, Death by Water, and What the Thunder Said. T.S. Eliot dedicated this poem with the following. The translation is this right here in English. And it says, for Ezra Pound, the greater craftsman. Now, Ezra Pound was known to be a member and later a militant member of the Dada movement. The Dada movement, we're going to take it and we're going to look through its lens to dissect the wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Now, in 1916, Hugo Ball wrote the Dada Manifesto, and he said this, It's a question of connections and of loosening them up a bit to start with. So today, we're going to loosen things up a bit and look at all the connections between the Wasteland and the Zodiac Killer. April is the cruelest month, breeding. Lilacs out of the dead land mixing, memory and desire stirring, dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth and forgetful snow feeding, a little life with dried tubers. Summer surprises coming over the Stombergersy. <laughs> Hope I said that one right. With a shower of rain, we stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the Hofgarten and drank coffee and talked for an hour. April is the cruelest month breeding. Lilacs out of the dead land mixing, memory and desire stirring dull roots with spring rain. That was a reading of the first stanzas of The Burial of the Dead, part one of The Wasteland. Now, the Zodiac Killer sent a card called the Monticello Card, and it read, Near Monticello shot victims 21. In the woods dies April. And there's your first connection, the Monticello Card. Now remember, in our last video, we discussed locations at length, and one of the locations that came up was Monticello. Monticello had two um, interesting, important things that led right to that location, and that's not only the Monticello card, but also this diagram that's from the bus bomb letter from 1969. It's one of the X's, and it also has a Route 666 right here, going from Gallup all the way up to ending in Monticello. Now, there's the first connection of the poem. The poem is rather long. I'll show you the next slide. We're not going to read the whole thing. We will come back to a few things, specifically the dry stone, but this is not the time to talk about it. We're going to talk about that under the section called What the Thunder Said. Right now, let's get straight to the connections. The ones that are right there, right in your face, and not all of what I would consider fluff literature that's there just to obscure the point. I don't need to hear about drinking coffee or the sledding and the hyacinth girl reference. We'll come back to it at a different time. Today, we want to get straight to the direct references. So here. Lines 43 through 51 of Burial of the Dead read, Madame Sesostris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold. Nevertheless, is known to be the wisest woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look, here is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks the lady of situations. Here is the man with three staves, and here the wheel. All right, let's break this down into small pieces. First, here's Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Now, the lady of situations, in relation to the Zodiac Killer, in relation to the Halloween card, We've got Red Mask and the Death Wheel again. Lady of Situations spinning the wheel. Now, the man with three staves and the wheel. The man with three staves is a tarot card. 
the third tarot card, and the wheel, the death wheel, and there's that wicked pack of cards. Not only the tarot card is a wicked pack of cards, but also these cards, the classic playing cards, right there on the death wheel. Now, the death wheel is an interesting reference, and it's been referenced for a very long time. The Wheel of Situations. Now, here is a 1500s and a 1400s depiction of the Death Wheel. The thing about the Death Wheel is everybody's on it. We're all going to die as long as we're on this wheel. Here's another depiction. Lady of Situations and the Death Wheel. There it is running someone over. Now, Let's go to this wicked pack of cards and the next lines of the poem. And here is the one-eyed merchant. And this card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back, which I am forbidden to see. I do not find. One-eyed merchant. What's that make you think of? This doesn't rhyme. It's not a rhyme scheme. Yet... It could be. If we took one-eyed merchant and had it be one-eyed jack, all of a sudden the poem would rhyme. And here is the one-eyed jack and his card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back. Now, one-eyed jack is an interesting reference. For one, it's right back to this wicked pack of cards. And two, there's a movie from 1961 called One-Eyed Jacks. And there's the red mask right there. It looks just like him and the Western theme. Now, moving from these lines, I do not find the hanged man fear death by water. I see crowds of people walking around in a ring. Okay, so, so far we've got the Wicked Pack of Cards, the Lady of Situations, the Death Wheel, and now we're at the Hanged Man. What is the Hanged Man? Well, the Hanged Man is, again, part of the Wicked Pack of Cards. It is a tarot card. In this case, it says it's the 12th tarot card. And in this depiction of it, it kind of matches the Halloween card. If we were to flip him over... There you go. Now to reverse the hangman, right there, to match what the Halloween card is, a reversed hangman means a false prophecy and needless sacrifice. Now the whole MO of the Zodiac is needless sacrifice and a game. It's a game of people's lives. It's needlessly killing people. And it's all along this wicked roll of the dice, paradise slaves, and the spinning of the death wheel, death by water, by knife, by rope, by fire, by gun. Now, the death by water reference and the hangman and the drowned Phoenician sailor, there is a depiction of the hangman where he's drowning. So there's the drowned Phoenician sailor and death by water reference one more time. Now, your death by water and um, disclaimer there are graphic images coming up of um, real events and real crime scenes um, and one of the things that came to mind when I read this line the hanged man and fear death by water that's the same time period as this poem is this this is 1911 um, this is a hanging that happened in Oakman, Oklahoma, and there's one of the images. It's also, when do you see crowds of people walking around in a ring? I see crowds of people walking around in a ring. This is a 1920s photograph in Denver, Colorado, on Table Mountain. And this is another photograph of KKK. Now, interestingly, 
the three staves and the burning of the crosses kind of go. And there's those crowds of people around the hanged man. 1916, Texas. Now, thank you. If you see dear Miss Equitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Bring the horoscope myself. Well, there's the zodiac. The poem continues. Unreal City. Under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many. I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Flowed up at the hill and down King William Street, to where St. Mary Woolnoff kept the hours, with the dead sound on one final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew. I stopped him, crying, Stetson, you who were with me at the ships at Miley, that corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence, that's friend to men. Or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You hypocrite, lecture, mon semblable, mon frere. There's another reference to dead body buried in the backyard and the dog reference, which we'll come back to in a few slides. Remember, it's a question of connections and of loosening them up a bit. Oh, keep the dog far hence. We're looking at this through the Dada's eyes, the Dada lens. And here is some Dada art and the dog and the dog bites from the Halloween card. And the dog bites here, which is an image of someone who was mauled by a bulldog. All right, that's the end of part one. Now, to go on to part two, it's called a game of chess. These are all stanzas. I think we are in Rat's Alley where the dead men lost their bones. Yet there, the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice. I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. That Shakespearean rag, it's so elegant. The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four. And we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. These are all just phrases from the poem, not in specific order, all of which we will be talking about. Dead men lost their bones, the nightingale and the desert with inviolable voices. We'll talk about the desert, especially in what the thunder said. Pearls that were his eyes, the pearl reference, Shakespeare reference again, which we'll talk about Shakespeare. We know that Shakespeare only had 37 plays, which is in itself interesting. The number 37 again. And then these lidless eyes that knock upon the door. There's those lidless eyes right there. Starting at line 139, the game of chess reads, When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince my words. I said to her myself, Hurry up, please, it's time. Now Albert's coming back, make yourself a bit smart. He'll want to know what you done with that money he gave you to get yourself some teeth. He did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and get a nice set. He said, I swear, I can't bear to look at you. And no more can't, I, I said. And think of poor Albert. He's been in the army four years. He wants a good time. And if you don't give it to him, there's others. Will, I said. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique. And her only thirty-one. 
I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off, she said. She's had five already and nearly died of young George. The chemist said it would be all right, but I've never been the same. So this, you know, this stanza is just talking about a woman who's been drugged and now needs new teeth and is completely disposable because the guy wants a good time and he'll be able to find others that will be able to give it to him. So a reference to a dentist, the chemist needing new teeth, brings us to this. What famous author's other profession was being a dentist? Here's a hint. His first name was Pearl. He was born in Zanesville, Ohio. Here's another Ohio reference. And many know him to have the first initial Z. Ohio. Well, he wrote this. Born to the West. It's a, or a reissue title of Helltown. It's a 1937 American Western film starring John Wayne and it's based upon a Zane Grey novel. Now Zane Grey, his real name was Pearl. And we're gonna come right back to Helltown here in the next section called The Fire Sermon. There's a lot of interesting Ohio references. Now, The Fire Sermon, part three of The Wasteland reads, the river's tent is broken, the last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown land unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet fames run softly till I end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or other testimony of summer nights. The nymphs are departed, and their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed, have left no addresses. By the waters of Lamon, I sat down and wept. Sweet fames run softly till I end my song. Sweet fames run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back, in a cold blast, I hear the rattle of the bones, and chuckle spread from ear to ear. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank, while I was fishing in the dull canal. On a winter evening, round behind the gas house, musing upon the king my brother's wreck, and on the king my father's death before him, white bodies naked on the low damp ground and bones cast in a little low dry garret rattled by the rat's foot only year to year but at my back from time to time i hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring sweeney to miss porter in the spring we will talk about sweeney and porter soon not in this video. But let's talk about the rattle of the bones and the chuckle spread from ear to ear and these white bodies and their significance in relation to the Thames. The Thames. There were the Thames torso murders from 1887 to 1889 and potentially even further back to 1884. Now these link right back into a very famous serial killer, and we are not going to go into that today. It is going to link back in intricately, but today we want to know the Thames torso murders and how they link back. Well there is the hanged man, diced into a torso in that wicked pack of cards. And here the horns and motors and the finding of one of the torsos depicted in the Illustrated Police News newspaper in October of 1888. There's another famous series of torso murders that link in and are very similar, except they took place in the 1930s. And where did they take place? 
another Ohio reference. The Ohio Torsor Motors. One account says, in September of 1936, a transient trips over the upper half of a man's torso while trying to hop a train at East 37th Street in Kingsbury Run, Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. This is an image of the Cleveland police looking for body parts in water. It's a series of unsolved murders and they're all mutilated corpses, just like the Thames torso murders. There's 12 known victims, and potentially more, up to 20, one of which is a body found in 1934 that was nicknamed the Lady of the Lake. Again, another death by water reference. I found it interesting that it was East 37th Street. There's another 37 reference that keeps being a reoccurring theme. And Kingsbury Run, well, Kingsbury Run is also a place in England, linking right back to the Thames torso murders. But Kingsbury Run is this very specific place in Cleveland, which is actually a waterway right back into the, I believe it's the Cuyahoga River. Now, 20 miles downstream is a place we referenced just a minute ago. Helltown, that movie that came out in 1937, so the same year that these murders were taking place. Now, Helltown, Ohio, is an interesting location. And there was a movie made in 2017 about Helltown. It's a mockumentary, but it has an interesting image embedded in it. I'm going to show you right now. Right here. Why does this look so familiar? And here we go, it's Boston, Ohio, nicknamed Helltown, has lots of legends, these are the masks, and then there's the talk about the Wendigo. Now, in the movie, they call it the W cult, which is interesting, considering some of the hypotheses regarding the W within the Halloween card. Now, the W cult, from this movie, mockumentary style, it's all portrayed as being real, is this picture and this picture what does it look like well it looks like none other than the zodiac killer sketch this very famous sketch we've all seen now there it is another interesting reference from this helltown movie not only is it in ohio which we're finding has some interesting connections back into this poem as well as highway 666 as well as the number 1437. But here, here's that number 14 again. 14 dead in cold compound shooting. Fake article? Probably. It's used in this movie, this 2017 Helltown movie. Another interesting plot line they wanted to put into this Helltown movie is missing children. There are lots of murders and missing children cases from the 60s that are very, very real. Yet this 2017 film puts these in there, which we don't know who these kids are. They got their pictures. They're putting them into this article. And supposedly it's taking place in 67. But over here, it's all in like Latin, all the text here. Fake article? Probably. Why they put it in there? That's probably a really good question to ask. Why the number 14? Why the Zodiac masks? And why Helltown? Now, back to the poem. The rattle of the bones and a chuckle spread from ear to ear. What other famous murder had the chuckle spread from ear to ear? Well, there's several. These are both unsolved. They're a part of a series of unsolved murders. This is the Black Dahlia murder from 1947. It's nicknamed the Black Dahlia murder. It's a torso murder. She has been completely cut apart. And there's the Glasgow smile or the Chelsea grin. And there it is in 1888 as part of the Thames Torso Murders and Jack the Ripper. 
Now, this grin spread from ear to ear, ties back into the wasteland in several ways. The Joker is part of that wicked pack of cards, and he first appeared in April, the cruelest month of 1940. And there's the wicked pack of cards. And the alias of the Joker is known as Red Hood. Now, there's also a 1928 silent drama called The Man Who Laughs, right here. Now, why else does this grin look so familiar? 60s media has Mr. Sardonicus right here with the similar bourgeoisie Jack the Ripper theme going on. But this grin looks very familiar in regards to the Zodiac because there it is on the front cover of the Halloween card right there. That's the grin. It's it's perfect. It's an irrefutable connection. It's perfectly aligned, and it's, again, a 1960s movie. There are lots of 1960s media that will link back into this, and Mr. Sardonicus is a very interesting one. Mr. Sardonicus also links back into Jack the Ripper, the East End Horrors, and this is one of those depictions from the 1800s. Now, Jack the Ripper and the Zodiac have a lot in common. Not only did they both like writing the press, they're both completely unsolved mysteries. There are, of course, a lot of other connections that we'll talk about soon, but in this video, we really want to talk about these torso murders, the Thames, the Wasteland, and how the Wasteland ties right back into the Zodiac. So far, we've found a lot of connections especially regarding the Halloween card, which is a very, very interesting card, packed full of clues. The card itself is the cipher. Now, let's go on. These are all unsolved. Like a taxi, throbbing, waiting, I, Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives. Throbbing between two lives, kind of like a serial killer would. Now, what's the taxi? Well, we know that there is the taxi murder. On October 11th, 1969, taxi driver Paul Stein was murdered by the Zodiac in Presidio Heights, San Francisco. And there's the taxi, throbbing and waiting, throbbing like blood pressure, throbbing. Next lines. I can connect nothing with nothing. The broken fingernails of dirty hands. My people, humble people, who expect nothing. La, la, to Carthage then I came. Burning, 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 burning. O oh Lord, thou pluckest me out. O oh Lord, thou pluckest, burning. There's that by fire. Now. Part four is the most direct reference of the wasteland. Why? Death by water. Now, we know that death by water links to the Halloween card. I'll re-review that in a moment. This is all the part is. This is the entire part four. Plebis, the Phoenician, a fortnight dead. Now, and then of course, turn the wheel now, here's the wheel, the death by water, right there, and this is an interesting data image, of a bathtub kind of thing. Now, <clears throat> welcome back to the Halloween card. We went over Sardonicus and all of the connections we've gone through so far into the wasteland and the zodiac. Death by water and the back of the zodiac card, we've got the by fire, by gun, by knife, by rope, and the death by water lies behind the mask, of the center of the Halloween card. Now, and is on the death wheel within the 1952 Red Mask comic. And we already went over how all of these symbols in the middle of the Halloween card 
point to bodies of water. There they are. Now, what we didn't go over, and what we're going to go over more right now, is this front cover. We now know the Sardonicus reference, and that grin from ear to ear, also known as the Chelsea grin, its relation to the Thames, Torso Murders, and Elliot. Now, what is this number 14, and what is this hand symbol going on here? 14. 14. Well, right here. It isn't it a 6, 6, 6. And we know that there's a 14 mile 666 right there in Ohio. Now, Ohio, again, there's a song called On the Banks of the Ohio. I took her by her pretty white hand. I led her down the banks of sand. I plunged her in where she would drown and watched her as she floated down. Darling, say. Okay, so that's a 19th century murder ballad that has an unknown origin. It was commercialized after 1927, and it's a direct death by water reference. There's a lot of things leading back to Ohio so far. We'll talk about Sweeney and Miss Porter and how that links to Ohio as well. But for now, that one's quite compelling. And 666, the 14 mile 666 and the locations it ties back into this 666 in Monticello. Now, let's talk about what the thunder said. Part 5 of Death by Water. So, this is going to link us right back into some more interesting locations. And here it goes. After the torchlight, red on sweaty faces, after the frosty silence in the gardens, after the agony in stony places, the shouting and the crying, prison and palace and reverberation of thunder of spring over distant mountains. He who was living is now dead. We who were living are now dying with a little patience. Here is no water but only rock rock and no water and the sandy road the road winding above um, among the mountains which are mountains of rock without water if there were water we should stop and drink amongst the rock one cannot stop or think sweat is dry and feet are in the sand if there were only water amongst the rock dead mountain mouth of carious teeth that cannot spit here one can neither stand nor lie nor sit there is not even silence in the mountains but dry sterile thunder without rain there is not even solitude in the mountains but red sullen faces sneer and snarl from doors of mud cracked houses well clearly talking about the desert and mountains with very steep cliffs and here this right here is an image of a place where there are red, sullen faces and mud-cracked houses. This right here is what's called Thunder Mountain in the background. Okay. What the thunder said. There's not even silence in the mountains, but dry, sterile thunder without rain and the mud-cracked houses. Now, what the thunder said. Dawa Yelane is mythologically associated with the house of the gods and the making of rain, lightning, and thunder. And from this came its alternate name, Thunder Mountain. There's those red rocks, steep cliffs, the red rock one cannot stop or think, sweat is dry and feet are in the sand. Well, there you go. 
there's the location. Now, in the first part of the poem, The Burial of the Dead, there's another location reference, right here, line 22 through 30. A heap of broken images, where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock, and I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. There again is the red rock reference and the location reference. And we've got it within the circle and right down here is Dawa Yulani or Thunder Mountain. The poem continues into this. This is the last of it. Then spoke the thunder. Da, Dada, what have we given? My friend, blood shaking my heart, the awful daring of a moment's surrender, which an age of prudence can never retract. By this, and this only, we have existed, which is not to be found in our obituaries, or in memories draped by the beneficent spider, or under seals broken by the lean solicitor in our empty rooms. Da, diadivam. I have heard the key. Turn in the door once and turn once only. We think of the key, each in his prison, thinking of the key, each confirms a prison. Only at nightfall ethereal rumors revive for a moment a broken Coriolanus. Da, da miata. The boat responded gaily to the hand expert with sail and oar. The sea was calm. Your heart would have responded gaily when invited, beating obedient to controlling hands. Those are the last stanzas of The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. The Beneficent Spider, interestingly, is also in the Halloween card right there in the top corner around a gently draped hand onto the spider web. Beating obedient to controlling hands. Now, interesting. What is Dada? There it is. Da, 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 Dada. An international word. Just a word. And the word a movement. Very easy to understand. Quite terribly simple. To make of it an artistic tendency must mean that one is anticipating complications. Dada psychology, Dada Germany come indigestion and fog paroxysm, Dada literature, Dada bourgeoisie, and yourselves, honored poets, who are always writing with words, but never writing the word itself, who are always writing around the actual point. Dada, world war without end, Dada revolution without beginning, Dada. You friends and also poets, esteemed sirs, manufacturers, and evangelists. That's an excerpt from the Dada Manifesto by Hugo Ball in 1916. Now, always writing with words, but never writing the word itself. Always writing around the actual point. When I say fluff literature around some of the stanzas in this poem, that's what I mean. It's writing around the actual point. The points are there. They're not hard to find. It's quite terribly simple. And they point to quite terrible things. Now, it's a question of connections and of loosening them up a bit to start with. This is all data. And we have some serious questions. Does the Zodiac's communication through killings and cards directly implicate the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot? Was the Wasteland used as a sort of playbook by the Zodiac Killer? Was the Zodiac part of a bigger movement? Was T.S. Eliot part of a bigger movement? 
And here's another quote from the Dada Manifesto. How does one become famous? By saying Dada with a noble gesture and delicate propriety till one goes crazy, till one loses consciousness. How can one get rid of everything that smacks of journalism, worms, everything nice and right, blinkered, moralistic, Europeanized, enervated, by saying Dada? Hmm, so there's some connections here. The Dada movement, T.S. Eliot, all of the references that tie right back into the Zodiac Killer, and then of course the Zodiac Killer, the Halloween card, and how it links right back into the 1960s media, as well as back into the 20s, which is that um, that play we saw, and the Chelsea Grin, Mr. Sardonicus, The Man Who Laughs, which was a 28 silent drama, and then of course the torso murders of the 1880s. We are traversing time with this and finding lots of interesting connections. The Zodiac's Wasteland. The Zodiac never dies. It cycles with the skies. Through ages and across the earth, the Zodiac continually goes through rebirth. Spinning like a wheel of fates, the Zodiac dominates the dates. It tells you what your character will be and wields whims of influence to make its decree. Many paths will it snuff out, kill and frame as it breeds doubt. Public perception is its favorite game, from fortune to tabloids, chronicles of fame. Where do you find it lurking? In faces slyly smirking? Where will it find you unaware? By water or roadway? Truth or dare? Knife in the back, shot in the dark, fires from hell and ropes over bark. Holy water bathes the souls who dare to question what they've been told. Codes and ciphers trick the masses. Misinformation will be taught in classes. Infamy will typify its cause. The zodiac has you in its jaws. Biting down on fleshy memories, continuing to weave new tapestries of blatant acts of violence, of crimes settled into silence. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for our upcoming novel to be published this year in 2020. Things are becoming clear. We don't know Jack, let alone the Zodiac.